and I'm going to read the 10 verses in Psalm 111. This is going to be number one of a series that I'm going to do on these 10 verses. It said, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and gracious, glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear him. He will even be mindful of his covenant, ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are variety and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, and his praise endureth forever. There is one thing I will say with this reading. You cannot do his commandments if you don't know what his commandments are. I'm not talking just about the Ten Commandments of the Law. I'm talking about the commandments for righteous living. That you separate yourself from the past and from the present world system that's out there today that would say that every man is a God unto him own self. And he doesn't have to be concerned about the God of heaven or about this book, the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, the holy book of God. The Bible is the holy book of God. As of late, I've been talking much about gears. And the drive gear for the heavenly bound people is the Bible. It is the main gear for your spiritual life. The Bible is. If you're not in the Bible, you don't have the gear to drive your life. You cannot shift out of low if you don't have a drive gear. The drive gear meshes the gears together. It will push forward and connect into reverse. And you can back up. Or you can bring it out of that mode and it will move down a little bit and it will be in low gear. And that is your takeoff gear to start with. Now this is where we start in the Psalms. They are the drive gear and they are low gear for us to study and to see. You say, well, they were written thousands of years ago for people. No, they were written for today. They are, they were, and they are, and they always will be. God said his word will never pass away, not ever pass away. This word will be used in that new world that we will have for a thousand years this world will be renewed for a thousand years. This word will be used, this same word. And it's going to be used. And this is going to be the drive gear until God is, I don't know, I don't think it will ever, the Bible said it will never perish. It will never perish away. It will always be a memorial for the way man should live. God and man. Can you imagine a God that would create a man to worship him. Knowing there would be millions and millions, billions of people, human beings, use this particular earth. You say, Brother Peter, you're clarifying that pretty close, and you say, yes, 
because we only know about this particular earth with people on it. God may have a dozen others. We don't know. We actually don't know how many times he used this earth after he spoke it into existence. But we know the beginning that we know was where Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. That's the beginning we know. And that's the only beginning we need to know. We don't need to delve in and research into the past beyond Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were where we were started, and that's what counts. That was our appropriation. That was where we started, where God made man and woman. He made man and woman as one. And then he took one out of the rib, which was Eve, and made her and sealed up the wound. And Eve became the matron of Adam. And so uh, even though she came from his side and was a woman, she was going to be his wife. And that is a picture of when a man and a woman get married, if you please. This is not probably going to be received or accepted by some because of the way they're thinking. But if they were thinking spiritually, my wife was my completer. She was like putting the rib back in me. When I married her, I got the right amount of ribs and I was ready to go and gung-ho and it's been a good life, it was a good life with her. I have her picture on both sides of me right now. I see that gleam in her eye and that glitter. I see that expression on her face that says, sick em boy. <laughs> and so uh, she was 100% behind me, in front of me, and before me. Uh, actually, she was my completer. And without her, I am incomplete. I am a man. Yes, I do have God in my heart. Yes, I am following the Lord. But it's not the same as having this person that was beside me for 57 years, day and night. And now, I'm by myself. I'm supposing that I'm speaking to many people that are. You've got to fill your life now. You have got to fill your life up. You've got to fill it up with the Word. Fill it up with the Word. Fill it up with study. Fill it up with godly things. Fill it up with going out and meeting people. Uh, try, uh, without counting, really counting, try to influence at least seven, at least seven people on a daily basis. Seven times seven is what? Forty-nine? That means there's 49 people in the world on a weekly basis basis that you can touch and if you'll stretch a little bit and make it 50 uh, you could reach 50 people every week for the Lord you could speak to 50 people every week for the Lord that's 200 and something people a month and you, you can influence that many people uh, if you're in the store what are you in the store for? I go in the store sometimes for nothing for nothing. <laughs> Just go in the store. And you can be looking. And you're beside somebody. And they're looking and looking and looking and they make the comment. I can make a comment. You know, I kind of have the same problem. I haven't really decided what I want yet. <laughs> but you know, there was a time in my life when I didn't know what I wanted. And when I met Jesus, I asked him into my heart. He was what I wanted. And now I go to Faith Baptist Church. I'd like to give you one of our invites. This is our little track. I'd like to give you an invite. So there's always a way to break the ice. It, it, it was amazing when I was younger and we still had ice sheds in the town and Daddy could take the wagon and go down and get a block of ice and bring it back up to the house and put it in the ice box and you had an ice pick. And you know, any of old timers in that day, my daddy and my mom knew how to pick ice. They knew how to chunk off a piece of ice for this or that, or to put in a drink, or to keep something cold. We, we actually we didn't we didn't use ice in our drinks back in my day. Uh, ice was too valuable to put in a drink. 
you drink a drink. I still do drink. I go right in the store, buy a drink right off the shelf and drink it warm. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not an ice man that I have to have ice in my drink. I just soon have a warm drink. As a matter of fact, I like a warm Coca-Cola as good as I do. As a matter of fact, I even like hot Coke. And uh, Brother Ed Velo used to come to church and he'd say, if you ain't trying it, don't knock it. He said, I don't drink coffee. I drink hot Coke. I put my Coke on. I heat my Coke up and drink it as like it was coffee. And it's good. It's probably just as habit for them, and it's probably just as bad for you. But the thing about it is, this life is, this is a human life. It's an actual life that we're living. We are living an actual life, and we do actual things. And as we do these actual things, do we have God incorporated in the actual things that we do? Now, Psalm 111, I just read, is the incorporation from God. Psalm 111, if you please, goes for me from the day the stars were created, the day the world was spoken to existence, to Revelations. It's ten verses. It has a twin sign. Psalm 112 is the twin. It says the same thing, but in different words, in different ways. And, but they are twin signs in a sense. Nobody knows who wrote either one of them. Or if the same person wrote them both, even though they are attributed to the same person. But we do not uh, know exactly who wrote everything that's in the Bible, except we know that God was the author. The Holy Spirit in Bible days came upon men of old and gave them this writing to be able to write this. By the way, all of the men that wrote the Bible could not write. Some of them used a scribe. I would be the one, I would be one of those that would have to use a scribe. Not that I can't write, but I can't spell. And if you can't spell, you can't put legible words down. So therefore, has a man who could not write. Uh, for instance, I think I look at John, uh, the revelator, John, the one that wrote the book of John and uh, I and Revelations, and I see him as sitting at a, a, a table there in the prison setting that he was in. He was on the Isle of Patmos. He had been boiled in oil. He had been, all kinds of mutation had happened to him. I could see him not being able to write, but having a scribe sit there who could write. And as John revealed what the Holy Spirit was revealing to him, he's revealing it to this scribe, and this scribe is pinning it down as fast as John's revealing it to him. And now we have the book. And that's the way it worked. And you say, well, I, you know, I don't think without an education you could do that. Well, I got the news for you. God surpasses all human education. God, the Holy Spirit, surpasses all human ability. I, I do many things myself as I study during the week, and I find many things, and I have things happen to me that come directly from the Holy Spirit and from this Word. Not another man is teaching me, but God the Holy Spirit is teaching me. I write down many things, but people can't read them because I can't spell them right. So that's the problem I have. But anyway, when you can't spell, you have trouble. And let me tell you this. Don't let it completely defeat you. If you can't spell, okay. If you can't read good, okay. Read the best you can. Nobody says that you have to read these ten verses of Psalm 11 in three minutes. You could read them in three hours. As a matter of fact, I've been on it now for a couple hours, and all I've been doing is researching. I've got all kinds of books out. I've got even, I've got, I've got one of the best encyclopedias you ever saw out. And I have gone to some words. And those words, I have dissected them and I can't tell you what they were right now, but words that we in here. They're infallible words. They're words that have more than one meaning. 
They have great meaning. And uh, just for instance, uh, when when it he says will I will I will W I L L will man that covers a whole page in a dictionary a whole page in an encyclopedia what is will you can will to do something or I will do something or you can use it in many different forms many different ways and when you go to start explaining it. <laughs> Uh, a well driller will drill a well. An airplane will fly in the air. Uh, a car will drive on the road. Uh, will. What kind of, what is will? Will is a word that is the word of taking the place of the something or the somewhat. What, it, what the something will do. There you go as the will again. And the light will shine. I'm setting in a light that will shine. I have a lamp in the window that will shine if I turn the switch on. And all kinds of things. Will, will, will. And so we see right here. Praise ye the Lord. I will. Praise the Lord. Now, the, what kind of will is that? That's, that's that I will do it. But I also will to do it. I want to do it. So I will to do it. I'm using the word in different different things. The Lord with my whole heart. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Listen to what he's saying here. If you have pleasure... In the Word of God. That means you will get in it. And you will dissect it. And you will start studying it. This is the first. By the way, I am I am on. And I've been on 17 minutes rambling. And I forgot I was on. And I'm going to. Sometimes I do this when I'm not on. <laughs> and uh, so I am on. And uh, the work of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. So I'm having pleasure in doing God's Word. This is the first excerpt of, I don't know how many, on ten verses. And I'm saying you need to get in, get in, get in. I don't like the saying, get in, get out, or get run over. But that, but that kind of is the true. What is, in 111, 1 through 3, is talking about worship. Let's read verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. Those three verses are set apart by themselves. What are they? They are a resolve to worship. I do resolve this body and this head, this mind, and uh, in this house to worship him. That is my resolve. I am going to worship him. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to do it personally. I'm going to do it personally. That's what I was talking about a few minutes ago. I'm going to write, do right here in this house. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship God personally. Nobody but me. Just me in this house. And I'm going to worship God. Now, what else am I going to do? Number two, and we see in verse 3, I am going to worship God publicly. That's what I said a few minutes ago as I was studying, that I was going to take a track out of my pocket publicly. I'm not going to meet anybody, if possible. I'm not going to meet anybody in passing and leave them without a track today. This day when I go out, is this a new day? Yes, this is a new day. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. And I've been on a few hours already today. And so uh, here we are uh, uh, later on in the day, in the first sense of the word. And so I'm going to publicly do that. That's one and one. Now, one and verse two. The B reason for worship in verse two is is 
God's mighty display. He has a mighty display. Let's look at verse 2 one more time. See what it says. The work of the Lord's are great. Woo. Listen to that. The work of the Lord is great. If you would take, and I've done it. You can do it. It's fun. Take your big old encyclopedia here. Your big old, uh, this is a Collier's right here. This is a Collier's. And, and this is a, a nice, there's two volumes. They do it. Well, actually, actually, um, I'm old fashioned. I'm behind time. I use these books. I do have a telephone. And you know I could ask to telephone the same thing and I'd probably get a lot more answers even. But I just like doing the book work. I like looking it up. I like reading it. And I like doing that. But if you'll take Collier's and you'll take up, look at the word works. Just look it up. See what it is. And then uh, look at the word great and see where it goes. Look at the word sought. S-O-U-G-H-T. He said, I sought out. He said, you know what he said? I got my colliers out. And I really dug in to what this word was. And I put it in this verse. Only thing is, God, the Holy Spirit, was giving him that word. And that word is imperative. It's, it's imperative it's in there. It's so important in that verse. That it's, it's so important in that verse. If you just take that one verse, which has um, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 words in it. 9 words. 9 words. Uh, and, and you can ex do an exhaustible study on it, and you'll have a small book. <laughs> you'll have a small book on 9 words. Words mean something. Words in the Bible double mean something. God put words in the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? God wrote the Bible. Well, you say all these men wrote this. Yeah, God used them. He used them. See, God used Jesus as his flesh. Jesus came on the earth as the flesh of God. He was God in person on the earth in the flesh. Now, what did he do in the Old Testament? He used the words. He used men that were fleshly men to write the words and put them in his. So you and I can have them. <laughs> this guy that wrote this right here has been in heaven now probably for a couple thousand years. He's been in heaven. I'm sure that if he could see down here, he would not be too happy with what some people have done with his words. That's why I stick to the King James Version because it's as close to the original as we can get as far as I know. And so, it works. All right. So we covered three verses today in uh, 23 minutes. And this is number one in the series of Psalm 111. This is number one. And I'm going to do number two on the same date. And as I go to it, I'm going to do number two on this same date. And I'll still be in 111. So we're going to say goodbye. May God bless you. And we'll see you next time, okay? Right. Bye-bye.